We've all heard that enchanting song, I Love Your Smile, sung by none other than the R&B singer Shanice. The Pittsburgh native started her career as a child star after coming from a musical family who moved to Los Angeles to pursue their dreams. It wasn't long before Shanice was signed to Motown during her teenage years, met Michael Jackson, and became a chart topper. Still, things seemed to dramatically change during the latter stages of Shanice's career as she was dropped from her label and became homeless. In this video, we'll be exploring the legendary singer's career, how she rose to stardom, and how she became homeless but bounced back. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell to enjoy more deep dives on our favorite legendary artist. Shanice Lorraine Wilson Knox was born in Pittsburgh in 1974 and lived in East Liberty and McKees Rocks. She was born into a musical family, which included her father, Carl Black, a guitarist, and her mother, Crystal Wilson, a singer who performed in Pittsburgh with the group The Levation recorded with Tim Stevens, and sang with Jennifer Holliday and Luther Vandross. Her aunt, Penny Wilson, was also a singer, so it only made sense that Shanice began singing melodies as young as seven months from her crib, beginning with Shaka Khan's Tell Me Something Good. As a toddler, her mother and aunt brought her on stages around Pittsburgh to sing. Performing for the first time with her mother, father, and aunt at age three, Shanice said she knew that she wanted to be a singer. Crystal Wilson, Shanice, and Aunt Penny moved from Pittsburgh to Los Angeles in 1979, two years after Crystal's divorce. The family relocated to pursue careers in show business. At first, the five-year-old Shanice was homesick for Pittsburgh, but she soon found a new home in the entertainment industry. Crystal worked to establish singing careers for herself, her sister, and her daughter in Tinseltown. Shanice was the first to achieve success. She started her career at the age of five and appeared in musicals, commercials, and television shows for kids. To improve her vocal range, she took singing lessons from Seth Briggs, a vocal coach who also worked with Michael Jackson. In 1984, at the age of 10, Shanice appeared in a Kentucky Fried Chicken commercial with the jazz legend Ella Fitzgerald. She also became a regular dancer on the Nickelodeon TV show Kids Incorporated. The following year, at the age of 11, she won first prize on the Star Search talent show by singing Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Shanice was going places. In 1985, John McClain, an agent from A&M Records, watched Shanice perform in the musical Get Happy and was impressed by her talent. He signed an 11-year-old Shanice to a contract with A&M Records. However, the label waited until she was 15 to record her first album, as they believed that an 11-year-old child couldn't sing convincing love songs. As a result, Shanice's debut album, Discovery, was released by A&M in 1988 when she was 14. Two of the album singles, Baby Tell Me Can You Dance and No Half Steppin', became top 10 R&B hits. After hearing Shanice sing, Michael Jackson invited her to watch him film his Moonwalker video. Afterward, he advised Shanice to write her own songs, stating that it was how he became more famous. Soon after, Shanice signed with Motown Records, who were determined to make her a star. Gerald Busby, the president of Motown, had previously tried to sign Shanice when he worked at MCA, and when he had the chance to work with her again, he wasted no time in signing her. He described Shanice as a cornerstone artist for the label, and her project became a top priority as soon as she joined the company. According to an interview he gave with Billboard magazine, Shanice took advantage of her new opportunity and followed Michael Jackson's advice by writing her own songs. With the help of her Motown producer, Narada Michael Walden, she composed several tracks. Walden, who has worked with legendary singers like Whitney Houston, Aretha Franklin, and Mariah Carey, regarded Shanice as one of the most talented artists he has ever worked with. Under Walden's guidance, Shanice wrote eight out of the 12 songs included in her debut Motown album, Inner Child. She detailed the experience in an interview by saying, when we first met, he asked me to write down my ideas and they became the titles for some of the songs we wrote together. This included her hit song, I Love Your Smile, which she speaks about with USA Today. When I was working on my album, the Persian Gulf War was going on. Everybody was depressed. I wanted to bring out a song that would make people smile. 
The release of the single I Love Your Smile subsequently brought immense joy to Motown, Walden, and countless fans worldwide. The song topped the charts in 22 countries, including the United States, and its success contributed to the album Inner Child, selling millions of copies and achieving platinum status. Additionally, the album featured Shanice's remarkable five-octave vocal range on her rendition of Minnie Riperton's Loving You. Following her global triumph, Shanice embarked on an international tour, performing in various countries such as Hong Kong, Holland, England, Germany, and Canada. After the success of Inner Child, Shanice's demand as a singer soared. She lent her voice to movie soundtracks including Boomerang, Meteor Man, Pocahontas, and Panther. Additionally, she sang the theme song Saving Forever For You for the TV show One on One and a top 10 single for Beverly Hills 90210. Shanice was also sought after to provide backup vocals for famous singers such as Tony Braxton, Usher, Mary J. Blige, and Babyface. On Kenny Loggins' Live in the Redwood CD, she also performed a duet called Love Will Follow. In 1994, Motown released Shanice's second album, 21 Ways to Grow, which was produced by Dick Smith, the guitarist of Earth, Wind and & Fire, and Rhett Lawrence. The following year, Shanice made her Broadway debut as the first African-American to play Eponine in the musical Les Miserables. Later, Babyface signed Shanice to his Le Face Records label, and in 1999, she released her fourth album, also titled Shanice, along with a greatest hits compilation, Ultimate Collection, The Best of Shanice. The single When I Close My Eyes from the Shanice album jumped from number 91 to 16 in one week and eventually peaked at number 12 on the Hot 100 chart. Shanice had officially cemented her star status. In 1999, actor and comedian Flex Alexander's big break came when UPN loved his pilot for the show One on One, which hit television screens in 2001 and launched his career as a primetime superstar. Things were looking up in all areas of his life when he met singer Shanice Wilson. They both lived in the same San Fernando Valley apartment complex and ran into each other in an elevator. Though they knew each other's work, they were not close. You'll recall that Shanice wrote the soundtrack for Flex's show. They exchanged numbers and quickly became friends, spending hours chatting about life. During one of their conversations, Shanice confided in Flex that she had been praying for her soulmate. One day, as she was about to go on tour with NSYNC, Flex went to her rehearsal and said to her, you know, you've been praying for your soulmate, but your soulmate could be staring you right in your face. Shanice was initially stunned but eventually realized that he had a point. She said to herself, wait a minute, he has a good point. I think this is my soulmate. Shanice mentioned that Flex, who had recently became a born again Christian, was always respectful and never made any advances towards her. They mutually decided to abstain from sex until they got married. However, their courtship didn't last very long. One day, Flex invited Shanice to church where the pastor talked about ghetto engagements which referred to couples with prolonged engagements. After the sermon, Flex turned to Shanice and said, let's just do it, let's get married. Despite only dating for three months, Shanice agreed to get married and Flex saw it as a way of testing the waters before purchasing a ring. He proposed in a humorous way by jumping on the table and singing, you are so beautiful to me. Safe to say that Shanice loved it. Shanice accepted the proposal and they tied the knot on Valentine's Day in 2000. However, on their wedding night, while Flex was ready to consummate the marriage, Shanice was apprehensive. She admitted that she spent two hours in the bathroom while Flex waited on the bed. She was afraid to take the next step as it would be their first intimate experience. Meanwhile, with the song Flex, Time to Have Sex by Mad Cobra on repeat, Flex eventually fell asleep after waiting for so long. And of course, this was the moment that Shanice finally emerged from the bathroom. Nevertheless, Shanice overcame her timidity and became pregnant within their first year of marriage. Unfortunately, their happiness was short-lived. After releasing her fourth album with LaFace Records that topped the charts, Shanice flew to New York for a meeting with a prominent executive who expressed his excitement for her upcoming project. However, upon returning home to LA, she received a phone call from the label informing her that they were dropping her and encouraged her to be a mom for a while. 
At the time, Shanice was five months pregnant and was completely devastated. Feeling as though the opportunity to be both a successful singer and a mother had been taken away from her. Despite the setback, she managed to rebound and establish her own record label called Imagine, which was named after her children. Shanice has been very vocal about the fact that having Flex's support during this time of career transition was also immensely helpful. Following a six-year hiatus, she independently released her album, Every Woman Dreams, with the album peaking at number 30 on the R&B charts. In 2004, their second child was born, but in 2006, the couple faced a setback when One on One was canceled after five seasons, and Shanice's music career was also in limbo, leading to intense hardships. Despite surviving on residual checks from reruns of the TV series and Shanice's record sales, the couple struggled to make ends meet as their bills piled up and monthly expenses exceeded their income. Flex admitted in an interview with Yahoo Finance that he grew up watching his mom and grandmother living paycheck to paycheck, and he adopted the same principle as an adult, spending all of the $25,000 he was making a week and neglecting to pay taxes. He also spent a lot of money spoiling his wife, frequently putting eight grand on their American Express card at places like Burberry. As a result, they fell behind on their mortgage payments, which amounted to nearly $5,000 per month. In 2010, they discovered a foreclosure notice on their front door and were eventually escorted out by a sheriff. They had to move to the Embassy Suites Hotel and later with extended family members to share the bills. Shanice and Flex's financial struggles would have caused most couples to break up, but for them, it brought them even closer. They prayed together, communicated openly, and made a commitment early on in their marriage that divorce was not an option. Shanice revealed that to keep their relationship strong, she constantly flirts with her husband and expresses her love for him. They enjoy each other's company, whether they are out dancing or just having a party at home. In 2019, they celebrated their 19th wedding anniversary, and their love story embodies the essence of what a marriage should be. We wish them continued love and happiness in the years to come. For more videos on legendary artists, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on the notification bell to never miss a thing.